Hello everyone, welcome to another video which is getting released on Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas everyone. This uh, video is the race review of round 7 for the FIA and the first race we're looking at is Nations which was Group 2 at uh, Sardinia A2 which is the reverse. I think uh, Tyre was set at times 12, uh, fuel at times 3. It was 18 laps, uh, and as I said, we're in Group 2 cars. I decided to go with the 2016 Lexus. Uh, tyre choices was the racing soft and the racing medium, and the medium tyre was mandatory to be run within the race. So you see qualifying there did not go well. It was a very poor lap, uh, and we started in 20th place. So, for this race, we were still able to run the uh, hybrid tyre selection. So, we are running the racing sauce in the front with the mediums on the rear to fulfil that uh, tyre requirement of running the medium. As I said, in this race, you were still able to do that without penalty. That's since changed for the next round. Okay, starting at the very back, we come into turn one. We're just taking it nice and easy. We decided to save some fuel down the pick straight there was it was quite difficult to get these uh, group 2 cars to the end just fuel saving uh, with good speed so a little bit of fuel saving was required and uh, you're probably going to have to take some fuel on at the pit stops as well so things start to get a little bit messy here into turn 5 probably we've got a car that's spun in front of us uh, another car slow to the right hand side so two positions made up Nice and early. Uh, we change that fuel mix to one. Well, like I said, a lot of that fuel saving done there in the early stages. Now, as the qualifying uh, run was certainly not representative of uh, my pace, I was capable of doing a 31 4, which would have put me in the fringes of the, the top 10 for this one, but you have to get the lap done at the time. So the two drivers ahead are having a little bit of a squabble through uh, those two corners and again they have a little bit of a bump and we've got a car that's serving a penalty and recovering but we decide it's early in the race, let's not get too involved uh, we slow down, we let everybody get themselves sorted out and we now get back up to racing speed so Just trying to get, doing a little bit of weaving there, just try to keep the tyres Nice and warm. So, 17th place there. French when he makes a mistake into turn one, hits the barrier, slows him right down, and that's an opposition made up. And then Vesson, he uh, punts another driver off, and then goes to slow down to let him back through, but does it right in front of us. So, it's nice to be nice and uh, sort of slow down to let other drivers through if you make a mistake, but don't do it on the racing line. So a little bit later into lap 2 we have a car serving a penalty in front of us there, so we're up to 14th and then another car throws it off into this tricky last uh, sequence of corners at the end of the lap. So two laps down and we are up into 13th place, so who needs qualifying? We jump forward now to lap 5, uh, not very much has happened between lap 2 and 5 but it all starts to get a bit messy into that tricky tight right hander there uh, and that was kind of the theme of this race it was a very very messy race drivers making mistakes in front of you constantly and slowing you down uh, it was hard to actually get some representative lap times in so mr mitchie runs wide there and that pushes up into 12th place we take a look at 11th we get a bump from behind Again, it's just another messy sequence. We get a little bump there off the PRST driver, but no real damage done. So we are now in 12th place as we come up to the one further distance complete. I'm not quite actually where that five, isn't it? So, given how messy things have been in front of us, we decide to jump into the pits at the end of lap five. 
We'll take on a new set of soft tyres. We'll not do any refueling at this point. No point carrying the fuel when you don't need to. And back out onto the racetrack we go. Uh, very tricky or dangerous sort of uh, re-entrance to the track there. Cars coming out the pits are going a lot slower than cars that are up to full racing speed into turn one and uh, could cause a lot of problems if the timing was just wrong. So we actually lost the position there to Mr Mitch. He passed us round the outside into turn two as we came out the pits. Uh, obviously had a bit more confidence in his tyres. So a lap later as other cars have pitted and there's an example of just what I was talking about regarding the cars leaving the pits compared to cars up to full racing speed. We really didn't have any choice but to run into the Walker driver there. Again, no real damage done, just slowing everybody down. So we are in 12th position as we go into the start of lap 9. Mr Mitchy makes a bit of a mistake there. And that gives us a chance to go up the inside, more than avoiding action than anything else. But we have to take a tight line. And that compromises our exit and allows TX3 Basin to get round the outside of us. So we have to yield into that corner there because that's a single file. And again, just another example of messy driving going on in front of you that was costing. Costing me positions, costing me time. Uh, and that's a very frustrating race. So Basin and Mr Mitchie, they have a uh, a little bit of an altercation through the sort of fast flowing chicane that puts Mr Mitchie offline and we managed to dive down inside into the sequence of corners at the end of the lap and we're back up to 12th place. Uh, I'm probably in the slipstream here of uh, Wesson. So can we get a move done? Always oh, managed to go down the outside. Say going into the corner, but he just chops right in front of us. He was not having any of that. That causes a little bit of chaos behind us because I had to slow down. Okay, no real harm done. So we come to lap 11, and we're going to come in for our second and last pit stops. And you say our soft tyres. Uh, and we're going to have to take some fuel on for this one. Now we've been pushing quite hard, so. I had to take on a little bit more fuel than it was ideal, but I decided it was best to have fuel to push at the end rather than having to look after. So you can see as we came out the pits there, we did look behind us, we could see there was cars approaching and we kept our car to the, uh, the left hand side of the track as much as we could, uh, but not very many drivers were being quite as courteous as that. So we've got a run here on uh, we fight for 10th place. I believe this driver was on medium tyres. We actually did get ahead, but got out onto the marbles on that, that fast right-hander. And uh, that's not a place to be either. The traction zone. Uh, I think that's a Bahraini flag. I could be wrong, but I'm going to call it a Bahraini flag for the rest of this race. So if I'm wrong about that, then apologies to all uh, Bahrainis out there and whatever country flag that belongs to. So we're now getting held up by this driver, he's on medium tyres, uh, but he's doing a good job, keeping his car in the right place, and as long as you do that, you know, it's uh, quite hard to overtake somebody. So we actually make a mistake into turn one there, and that allows Mr Mitchie back ahead of us. Very, very silly mistake, absolutely no need to be making mistakes like that, uh, but then it's cost us our position. So a little bit further into the race we go, we are now on lap 14 of 18. Uh, we're in 12th place, but you can see there's a lot of drivers there in front of us. Again, a very messy... Uh, well, well, some messy driving going on in front of us. We're having to come off the throttle to avoid having accidents, but we do manage to get a, a run on Mr Mitchie. And we were in the slipstream, so we're able to pull ahead of him. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. <laughs> it seemed to be a bit of a 
a domino effect. I hit the car in front of me, the car behind me hit me. And I don't really know what was the catalyst of that. But again, another example of the masons of this race. So we have a run on the PRS T driver. I think he was doing a one stop and now has no tyres. Uh, um, we weren't actually looking to go for the move there, but his braking performance is so poor at the moment that he caught us out a little bit. We've had to essentially go for the dive down the out, inside to avoid an accident, but we've got the car stopped on the apex and it actually turned out to be quite a nice overtake. So we're up into 10th place and we are back behind our Bahraini friend, uh, who again we are being held up here. We check the fuel, you can see we have plenty of fuel to push for this lap and a half that is remaining. Take a bit of an optimistic look up the inside of the Bahraini there. Uh, my fault completely, and that allows a uh, BFR or a Mucho to get a run on us down here. He actually holds it nicely around the outside, but I think he's a little bit cheeky there the way he just cuts us off. He was not prepared to give us any room on the exit, uh, and that one annoyed me a little bit, I must say. Uh, I was courteous enough to give him the room. Uh, and that favour was certainly not returned come the next corner and I was forced to come off the throttle to avoid being pushed off the track. Now I know some people think that's an okay manoeuvre and maybe within the terms of the, the rules of racing it was, but I felt it was a little bit uncourteous. So the last lap it is, you can see I'm a little bit annoyed, I'm taking an optimistic look up the inside there of Ramucho, but Nothing too bad about that, we got on the brakes in time and we pulled out the manoeuvre before it caused an accident. So I don't think there could be any complaints about that one. So at this point, halfway through the last lap I'm thinking, well 11th place for him, 20th on the grid is uh, not a bad result. It's been a very very messy race all around us but we have generally kept it pretty clean, uh, apart from that one mistake into turn one that cost us a position. Nothing major has really happened. So, as we come out that corner, Fraser Pock, I think is doing a one stop, gets a bit of a wiggle on. Ramitro goes for, I'd say, a silly move. That allows us to get round the outside of him, so... I was quite happy with that, I was still a bit annoyed with his driving from earlier. Uh, and I think Fraser Box having to do some fuel saving, so we're able to blast past him down into the last corners. And two positions gained, uh, second in the half a lap, the last lap. And we're going to come across the line from ninth place, which is not a bad result at all from 20th. Uh, I did consider doing that one again, given how messy the race was. Uh, I certainly thought it was a better result in me and in the car, but we decided we would just take that, uh, as it was an interesting race and uh, good fun to commentate on. So we move swiftly on to the manufacturers, it was a uh, group 3 car, so I'm in the Citroen, it was Lago Maggiore 2, the reverse, uh, the full Grand Prix circuit, uh, 12 laps, Medium tyres, no tyre requirement for this one. Uh, I think tyres were at times 10 and fuel at times 2. So it was a terrible qualifying for myself. Qualifying never been a strong point for me, so 12th place. Uh, only 9 tenths off pole. I was quite pleased with that, I was quite confident that we would also be able to move forward in the race. So we have a, a Lamborghini in front of us here, uh, and he already looks to be struggling and holding us up a little bit, but maybe just having a bit of trouble getting some heat into the tyres, so at this point we're thinking it's early in the race, let's just get settled in, uh, look after the tyres, not do anything silly, uh, we're being held up, but not too much. Uh, and any sort of silly overtaking manoeuvre is probably only going to result in slowing us both down. Anyway. Oh, he's a 
We're clearly faster than the Lamborghini here. But uh, not finding anywhere to put in a sensible overtaking manoeuvre. So we're just going to stay behind the Lamborghini driver for the meantime and hopefully an opportunity will present itself a little bit further into the race. So we're fast forwarding through here, we're going at warp speed and we're going to do that until we come towards the end of lap 2 and now we rejoin the action at normal speed. So as I said, we were just looking for an opportunity to get by this Lamborghini driver without costing us too much time. He yeah, has definitely holding us up and there's now a little bit of a gap beginning to develop between him and the cars and the front of us. So we get a better run off the second to last corner, or the third to last corner. And uh, we slide the car nicely down the inside. Uh, the Lamborghini driver doesn't fight it at all. Uh, he knows it's probably best just to sit in my slipstream and try and let me drag him up to the cars in front. So a good overtake manoeuvre, I was quite pleased with that one. Good sensible driving from both parties as well. So we had a little bit of clean air there and we used that to gradually close up to the cars in front. Uh, tire wear, quite critical in this one so you had to sort of try and look after the tires as best you could. By not pu don't push too hard, don't slide the car, just caress the car around the track, look after the tires nicely. Uh, I'm trying being consistent in your lap time rather than one sort of couple of Banzai laps at the beginning of this stint and then having no tyres left for the rest of it. So we make up another position there, there's been a little bit of a elbows out into the tight hairpin and somebody has gone off and VDK Nesmar in that our Nem, Nems are in the Aston Martin, he pulls off into the pits for a very early pit stop at the end of lap 4 so I thought that was going to be a two stopper from that driver, but we'll see a little bit of the Aston Martin later on in the race. So into turn 1 here at the start of lap 6, the Corvette comes out in front of us, I did consider trying to fight that Corvette for the position, but then decided there's no point, they're on fresh tyres, they're going to overtake me within a couple of corners anyway, it's only going to cost me more time if I do that. The best bet is just to let that driver go and interfere with uh, the drivers in 4th and 5th and slow them down for me. And as we come through the fast left right, uh, perhaps the pressure has got to scrounge in the McLaren we have in the Corvette so close behind them and he's tried to take too much speed into that uh, fast chicane and had a rather big accident. Uh, but we've all been there, we've all done that accident, but we were the beneficiary of that one. So into the pits we come, uh, end of lap 6, no fuel required, new set of medium tyres. Uh, look behind us, we've got a nice gap behind us, and we have a nice gap in front of us. So we can try and bake the best of these uh, fresh tyres without any kind of interruptions. And uh, we're looking at a uh, Fairly decent result here, given we started in 12. We're up to 8th place. We've got fresh tyres, uh, and there's going to be opportunities, hopefully, to try and make some progress forward. Now, I said uh, we would talk about VDK Nemzor again, and that is the driver that is in front of us now in the Aston Martin. So it looks like he's not going to go for the two stopper. He's going to try a one-stopper with a very early tyre change on lap 4. So I know he's, this driver's now going to be really struggling on tyres. Uh, and we're going to have much more pace in the corners. But not the straights, because the Aston Martin is definitely quicker up than the section. And a straight line. You can see we are closing up in each and every corner. And now we're starting to get held up. Uh, the French driver's also not got the best connections, so he's sort of jinking about in front of us, which could be quite off putting. We'll take a little look at it, turn one. 
more just to try and uh, put them off. I don't know. I'm not actually trying to overtake there, I'm just trying to put them off. So you can definitely see the Aston Martin struggling for grip in the corners. The rear try to step out. As you come into the fast left right before the, the banked hairpin, we get a much better run through the second part of the, the chicane and now is the opportunity to dive up to the inside. Don't get a very good exit, uh, but we've got the, the move done. We've got Aston Martin in our slipstream, we're forced to go defensive. We can take a look behind. But Aston Martin's not really interested in making an overtake. He knows he can't hang with us through the corners. And that's gives us a nice little bump draft. Now we see the yellow flags are out. And we come into this sequence of corners here. We have a car recovering with a five second penalty. It's Wesson. Uh, that puts us off a little bit through there. I think we're going for the move down the, the outside. But this is a very tricky corner. Particularly on an MR car. The back end really wants to step out. No point going for anything too silly. The driver in front's got a penalty, we're going to get that position anyway. And there we go. As you serve the penalty, we've still got the close attention of the VDK driver behind us. But now we come into a twisty section. We should be able to pull away from the Aston Martin, give a Have much fresher tyres. So we jump forward to lap 11. We have Gap, the Aston Martin behind us. And not making very many inroads into the drivers in front of us, but there is a little group of three of them there. I think that's uh, third, fourth, and fifth are all fighting. And he's going to the fast uh, sequence of S's. That's not a good part of the track to be going side by side. And it looks like there's been an incident in front, and Afro first goes into the wall on the right hand side of the track. Uh, shame for that driver, but again, we are the beneficiary of somebody else's mistake, and we move up into 5th place. And 5th place we remain as we are about a third of the way into the last lap. Uh, we're quite are making inroads into the cars in front of us, but there's not going to be enough time to catch them, uh, let alone pass them. And we also have uh, fairly close attention behind from the PRST driver of Oitzel. Uh, that driver's had a very good drive as well. They've gone from 13th place up to 6th place, so they've made up the same number of positions as we have. Uh, so, uh, much like the last race, uh, we haven't really done anything spectacular. A couple of nice moves on the a nice move on the Lamborghini in lap two. Uh, and then we passed the Aston Martin, who was dying on its tyres anyway, but really all we've done is just keep the pace consistent, keep it decent, not make any major mistakes, don't get involved in battles that we don't really need to, for example, the Corvette into Turn 1 after it came out of the pits. Uh, and you can see it's you can make progress in races as long as you just keep everything nice, nice and tight, nice and clean, nice and tidy. I know I don't have the one lap pace or the ultimate speed of a lot of the drivers in this race, but I'm quite confident over a race distance I'm as good as any of them. And yeah, we're actually the fastest driver over these last two laps, we'll close it up on the looper as well. Yeah. So a nice smooth consistent style, helps you look after the tyres, uh, no mistakes and you can make some, some progress in your races without really being the quickest driver out there. So not two bad results uh, from certainly one very poor qualifying uh, and one average qualifying. We pick up a ninth in Nations and we pick up a fifth in Manufacturers. So if you've made it to this part of the video, only thing left to say is thank you very much for watching and as I said, it's Christmas Day today as this video goes out. Merry Christmas and I hope you've had a good one. Goodbye.